The year is 2006. Nintendo's last hit was the immortalized handheld Game Boy Advance and they desperately needed another win. Sony and Microsoft were going toe to toe with the release of the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 respectively and both consoles being all anybody could speak about. Nintendo decided to throw their hat in the ring once more and release the memed but beloved Wii console. Each console came with the free game Wii Sports an addictive and interactive sports game that either brought families and friends together or ruined relationships to an unhealthy degree. And I think you know where I'm going with this one. This isn't the first time Nintendo has had a chokehold on gamers from a music perspective. With the release of Mario Bros and Super Mario Bros back in the 1980s, Nintendo was doing just fine with the release of the NES or Nintendo Entertainment System. They did, however, seem to enjoy the success that the latter game brought them. This was in part thanks to the simple gameplay mechanics, innovative graphics for its time, and the addictive but brilliantly simple soundtrack, composed by Koji Kondo himself as he took inspiration from Japanese fusion band T-Square and their 1984 song Sister Marian. Not only that, but the most iconic song in the entire soundtrack, according to Konto-san himself, took the longest to make, as most iconic songs do. While there have been a couple of other systems released after the NES, such as the Game Boy and the GameCube, none of them have the most memeable and memorable sounds of any generation that came before or after, quite like the Wii's meteoric rise to fame. The simplistic yet sleek all-white design paired with, at the time, innovative wireless remote as a substitute for controllers was enough to get the attention from any Nintendo fanboy. However, turning the console on for the first time and hearing that infamous I knew that this was going to be an experience like no other. When looking at the music of not only the Wii menu screen, but also the Mii channel and Wii store, they all have a distinct composition that allows one to simply listen to them on repeat and not feel like there is any change. Think of this as a soothing form of limbo. This is because composer Kazumi Totaka made sure that each composition would be able to loop on and on and on for as long as possible and you wouldn't really get bored. YouTuber Charles Cornell explains this in so much detail that I would definitely say you should check out his video if, like me, you're a music nerd. Now since I'm a man of integrity, I decided to look further into the music of the Nintendo Wii and thankfully IGN has backed me up on that. According to them, that music meant your console wasn't some cold bit of hardware. It was a little portal to somewhere warmer, friendlier and way more interested in jazz than you'd go in expecting. And I, for one, agree. The Wii's design, while simple and sleek, acted as a portal to a world outside of our own when turned on, which the music does demonstrate pretty well. Thanks in no part to the fact that every single Wii channel that had any sort of music whatsoever was composed by one man, and this man was on a mission. Totaka-san isn't one for interviews, so of course finding him in any sort of capacity has been a bit of a mission, but you can bet that he had an idea of what he wanted to do, and the folks over at Nintendo knew to trust him. Since the Wii's continuation back in 2013, the only tangible piece of evidence that we have of its existence is in the music itself. Actually, no. Have you seen meme culture lately? I mean, it's no surprise that to this very day, the Nintendo Wii has been something that has been pretty memed by a lot of people, I'm not gonna lie. Every now and then we'll come across a new meme whatever and the music for the Nintendo Wii is there it's present you know sometimes I'll watch a YouTube video and the music for the Nintendo Wii is present sometimes I'll scroll on TikTok the music for the Nintendo Wii is present like you get the idea and I think that's probably one of the best ways for a console to die especially in this modern day and age where you know things come and go but what's nice about the Nintendo Wii is that its legacy has been immortalized through meme culture through you know this this not really a narrative as such but more so this idea that the music shaped so many people's lives that they've decided to bring it into the modern day albeit in a very cross way but like it's a way nonetheless one thing i will say is that i I'm proud of that because, again, the Nintendo Wii was my very first console, like, fun fact. For my 12th birthday, my mom gifted me the Nintendo Wii and since then I've been addicted. To this day, I wish that it hadn't broken the way that it, that it did, but you know what? I'm not gonna complain. 
Why? Because I'm still going to remember the fun times that I had with it, playing every single game that I bought after that. I bought Speed Racer, I bought Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, you know, I bought Guitar Hero, I bought DJ Hero, I bought a whole bunch of stuff, you know, especially one of, one of the deep cuts. Like, if you know the game No More Heroes, you deserve a veteran's card, plain and simple. So, with that being said, I'm just glad that, you know, the legacy of the Nintendo Wii is where it is now, even though after that we had the Wii U, we have, you know, the Nintendo Switch right now. They still, they don't have the kind of cultural chokehold that the Nintendo Wii has, especially within meme culture. Like, I don't know how many times I can listen to the Me Channel music and, you know, not get bored by it. And that's, that, that is a testament, you know what I mean? I just want to know from you guys. How did you guys, you know, what was your what was your opinion with the Nintendo Wii? You know, I, I I could talk all day about it, but yeah. The f kind of smile was that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't wear the glasses for this one because I know for a fact it was gonna look like doodle.